Hi everyone, I'm Cody Smith, Tech Support Manager with Cloys, and today I'm here with Andrew Markell, Director of Content for Shop Owner. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Today we're going to unbox this timing kit with VVT components, which is part number 9-0753S VVT. All right, let's get started. All right. So these are the, uh, the inventory of the box. Yeah, uh, you got a bill of material here on the first page, and then on the second page, you've got a uh, link to our uh, our website that shows you the tech video. We have a full 10 minute long tech video for the installation of this kit. And then there's some key installation tips that we really want to emphasize to make sure that, you know, you don't make any mistakes when you're installing the kit. And there's also an, an oil guideline and then links to our technical uh, assistance. Oh, you got a QR lines. code for the, uh, the mobile phone. Yeah, this will take you straight to our tech video. So it makes it really easy. This is going to be the bulk of the timing kit, all the timing chain components going to be in here. So this is for a General Motors high feature V6? Yes sir. So any uh, like the 2.8, 3.0 and 3.6 liter okay. GMs anywhere from about 2009 uh, all the way up to like 2019. So you're going to get all three timing chains, two secondaries which are the same chain and one primary chain which okay. is a little bit shorter than the other two. And those are all inverted tooth design chains? Yes, all three inverted tooth, just like the DOE chain was uh, for the later model high features. Uh, get a new crank sprocket, and everything's gonna be inner packed, so it stays nice and protected in the, in the box there. Your guides, you're gonna have two secondary guides on each bank. And then you got a couple primary guides as well, including the one for the oil pump. Oh. Now on this oil pump guide, you, you really don't want to disturb the bolts for the oil pump because they are torqued in sequence. So we actually recommend to just take the plastic or the nylon uh, guide off of this bracket and just install it onto the bracket on your, okay. on your vehicle, unless you're changing the oil pump and then you can you know, retorque with the new guide. Uh, next, we got the tensioners. All three tensioners will come with gaskets. So each one has their individual packaged gasket along with the tensioner. So with that one, to you put it on the vehicle and then you pull the pin out? Yeah, yeah, so you just uh, put it in, get the chain on, all the guides in place, and your, your last step's gonna be to pull the pin. When you pull the pin, it should activate the tensioner. Now, just, just as a precaution, you know, once you do pull the pin, it's good to, you know, if you don't see that spring start functioning, to go ahead and compress it completely and release it, and that will make sure that it actually activates, so. Okay. Yeah. Same thing, that was the primary tensioner with the, the contact pad kind of built into the piston. And then your secondaries will both work up against the uh, shoe, which has a little feature that works with the piston tip there. So, so I see that you're including a gasket with that tensioner. Mm -hmm. Is it critical that the technician torques down that tensioner properly to make yes, sure that yes. everything is sealed? Definitely follow the torque specs and do not use any kind of silicone or gasket maker on this uh, on this gasket. Any any of that stuff can get into the check valve of the tensioner and actually cause the tensioner to fail. So you definitely don't want to do that. Here's the third tensioner. And gasket. So how many tensioners in total for this engine? There's three tensioners. Three tensioners. There's three chains, so there's three tensioners. And then these are gonna be the idler sprockets. And you do have a left and a right. As a technician, I may be tempted not to put that on the vehicle because it's gonna take me extra time. Why should they be installing a brand new sprocket well, these, these teeth will wear, and you will see that on the original sprockets. If you look down in there, you'll see where the links of the inverter tooth chain have kind of worn little grooves in there. So, I mean, you might as well replace it. This is, it's one bolt. Okay. It's an it's a easy replacement. Now, when you do replace them, make sure you install them correctly, because we have seen people install these backwards. This, uh, this main sprocket assembly is actually the same for the left and the right, and you'll see a right bank front, and you'll see a left bank front. So it can be kind of confusing but you do want to make sure that this flat feature is against the engine and this is going to be the surface that your bolt actually installs okay. against. So with this facing front, it'll say right bank, so this will be the right bank side. 
and then this will be the left bank. What would happen if they did get them reversed? It will install actually, but you will break your timing cover when you go to install your timing cover. It'll, it'll pop holes on both sides of it. Okay. So, yeah. All right, what's the next? Rest of the components, these are gonna be your VVT components. Uh, your four solenoids are actually all the same in this application. So you're gonna get four of the VTS 108, which is the solenoid for this, this car. Solenoids are pretty basic. So with these, do they include the screens that are inside some of the oil control valves? Yes, yeah, your screens are all on here. They're all laser welded, so you're not gonna have them fall off or, or fail on you. Um, yeah. So again, as a technician, I see that there's, uh, how many of these four in the box? Yep, four in the box. So one for each camshaft. If I didn't replace these, what would happen? Well, I mean, the chan chances are, uh, you know, th these could have uh, debris in the screens, you know, clogging uh, the oil oil flow going in and out. Uh, so uh, once again, it's one bolt, you pull them out, you, you stick them back in, it, it's a it's an easy replacement, so you might as well do it. Is there any difference between the four? Nope, it's all the same, same, same exact part number. And then this is the exciting part here. This is your VVT phasers. Okay. And there are, there are four different boxes in here, of course, one for each camshaft, but there's actually just three part numbers. So your exhaust camshaft for each head is actually, uh, does take the same phaser, um, but you will have a right intake and a left intake. So make sure you get those installed on the correct banks. And your exhaust phasers, open one of these up. Oh, and they do come with bolts. And that's a torque yield bolt, right? Yes, yes. So make sure, make sure you use the, the new bolt and uh, get the torque specification. Make sure you get that correct. They're bubble bagged and wrapped. So on these exhaust phasers, like I said, these are the same for left and right, but you will find that they have both an R and an L. So when you're installing this exhaust phaser on the right bank, you're gonna install it using the R timing mark. Okay. And if you're installing it on the left bank, of course, use the L timing mark. So there's definitely detail on this in our, uh, in our full installation video that, that you can find on our website as well. Out of curiosity, are there any improvements that Close have made to these uh, phasers? No, we, we've stuck with the GM design. Uh, this engine has, has you know, uh, obvious issues that, that you can find plenty of information on, um, but the phasers really wasn't one of them. It was a it was a pretty solid unit with uh, no design flaws, so we didn't mess with it. This was the other exhaust. And then the intakes. This is the left hand intake. Okay. So like all technicians, they like opening stuff up and not really looking at the instructions or the label on the box. How do I know this is a left or a right? Okay, so the right will have an R right there on the sensor shroud. And then the left, if we pull that back over here, it will have an L. And you might see a little bit of residue on these parts. This is a, a rust inhibitor. Okay. So nothing to be concerned about whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, they are marked R and L. That's it. Well, that's it. I got a question for you. Okay. Timing approach. The uh, High Future V6 has a reputation for chain stretch. Mm -hmm. When they're replacing the timing chain, should they also be replacing the variable valve timer phasers? Yeah, you might as well while you're in there. Um, definitely, yeah. The, the chain stretch issue it was a lot of a, an oil type issue. Um, uh, the engine is, most of these engines are direct injection, so there's a lot of contaminants in the oil. Uh, so we recommend frequent oil changes on this engine. It'll definitely increase your you know, timing chain life. Um, 
so yeah, keep your oil changed, replace everything while you're there, reset the whole fatigue life of the system, and uh, you're, you're gonna be doing yourself a favor. I just got one more question for you. Okay. What's the sticker here? Okay, the sticker, uh, just referencing our uh, tech video, uh, you can go to our website. Once again, uh, we've got a 10 minute video, it walks you through all the steps on installing the kit, all the timing mark alignments, any you know simple tips and tricks that you need to, to make sure you get the, the kit installed properly. So uh, once again, we're just referencing the, the tech video we have. Well, thank you, Cody. This has been really informative. Yeah, I appreciate it. Keep this unboxing video in mind next time you go to service a timing system failure. For more information, you can visit our website at cloys.com. Thank you guys for watching.